Good evening. This 67th meeting of the 72nd term of the Baltimore City Council is now called to order. Please turn off all cell phones or put them on vibrate. Tonight's invocation will be delivered by Pastor Stevie Thompson of Wilson Park Christian Community Church. Following the invocation, we will have the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. On this auspicious occasion to this august body, we seek the face of God to listen to the prayers of his servants. We ask for wisdom, we ask for understanding, we ask for knowledge. Grant that the actions and decisions made throughout our time together are pleasing in thy sight, and that in your presence we are honored in all that we seek to do. In the words of our St. Francis of Assisi's, where he where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, as to love as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in parting that we are parting, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Thank you. Tonight's Showcase Baltimore presenter is Catherine Pitchford, Center for Urban Families. I want to thank you, Council President and the Council, for having us here today. So Center for Urban Families is located at 2201 North Monroe Street. We've been there since 1999. Um, one of the things that we, we, one of the core things that we do is job readiness, linking to job placement and occupational trainings. Um, and our idea is that we want to dismantle poverty in Baltimore City. Um, we have a fatherhood program that works with men and women that are suffering with child support issues and helping them to enhance their skills on um, co-parenting. And so we have been there. We continue to work and partner with organizations throughout the city. And we look forward to sending anybody. It's some information we sent around. Um, that could be helpful to talk about our programs, um, that we, more off, other programs that we offer. We do offer couples and Strive Future Leaders, GED. We help with expungements. We help people to become homeowners. So there's so many things that we do. And our core strategy is to work for, with people for three to five years in case management and our all-in strategy because people need support throughout. Thank you. Thank you. The clerk will call the roll of the members. President Scott, Cohen, McRae, Dorsey, Henry, Schleifer, Pinkett, Burnett, Bullock, Reisinger, Costello, Stokes, Sneed, Clark. Mr. President, we have a quorum. Thank you. We will now proceed with the adoption of the journal. Mr. President, the journal of the, 7th of the September the 9th, 2019 proceedings are on the council members' desks. Without objection, the journal is adopted. The journal is adopted. Communications from the mayor. Executive nominations to be withdrawn. EA 19-0249, Wendy L. Blair, Member, Planning Commission, District 14. This nomination has been withdrawn. Executive nominations. EA 19-0250, Jill Dennis, Member, Commission for Historical and Architectural Preservation, District 6. This has been assigned to the Executive Appointments Committee. Bills to be introduced. City Council Bill 19-0448, sale of property, 801 Bradish Avenue, for the purpose of authorizing the mayor and city council of Baltimore to sell at either public or private sale all its interests in certain property known as 801 Bradish Avenue, block 2373, lot 001, and no longer needed for public use and providing for a special effective date. Sponsors, City Council President, on behalf of administration, Councilman Bullock. This has been assigned to the Taxation, Finance, and Economic Development Committee. 
City Council Bill 19-0449, Zoning Use Regulations, Neighborhood Commercial Establishments for the purpose of prohibiting the sale of tobacco products and electronic smoking devices, accessories, and related products by a retail goods establishment that is a neighborhood commercial establishment. Sponsors, Clark, President Scott, Henry, Cohen, Dorsey, Burnett, Reisinger. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Clark. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the council. We have a special category in the new zoning code. It's called neighborhood commercial. In that category, if you have a residentially zoned property, a house usually, and you have a history any place in any year um, of having a commercial use in that property, no matter how long ago, you become eligible to seek a commercial use again in that property if granted permission by the zoning board. There are seven categories of commercial uses to which neighborhood commercial is restricted. The last one is uh, retail goods establishments. This amendment says if you have a retail establishment under neighborhood commercial, you may have that if the board grants it, but that use already, it says, may not help sale, sell alcohol. And the amendment says also it may not have tobacco product or electronic smoking device, accessory, or related product sales. That's it. These are, would be commercial uses that are in the midst of neighborhoods because it's in a residentially zoned property with a history. And they are beginning to appear all over the city of Baltimore since our new zoning code came out. Because they're in neighborhoods, because lately, frankly, electronic smoking devices are beginning to prove to be a deadly influence on especially our children, at least here, we should not allow their sale right in the midst of homes and schools and residential neighborhoods. I hope that you will support this legislation so that we, because almost every week, cases of neighborhood uh, establishment and retail goods establishments are coming before the board and getting approval. Thank you. Thank you. This has been assigned to the Land Use Committee. City Council Bill 19 0450 zoning signs conversion of existing non-digital billboards for the purpose of amending the provisions concerning the conversion of non-digital billboards. Sponsor, Reisinger. Chair recognizes Councilman Reisinger. Mr. President, thank you. Uh, this should have been taken care of during Transform Baltimore, but it wasn't. And the purpose is basically change the provisions concerning the conversion of a non-digital billboard to a digital billboard. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. This has been assigned to the Land Use Committee. City Council Bill 19-0451, Biennial Comprehensive Crime Reduction Plan, for the purpose of requiring that the Mayor's Office of Criminal Justice present to the City Council a biennial comprehensive crime reduction plan, specifying that the Mayor's Office of Criminal Justice develop the plan in consultation with certain agencies, establishing the contents of the plan and requiring the publication of the plan on the City's website for public comment. Sponsors, President Scott, Henry, Cohen, Schleifer, Costello, Pinkett, Burnett, Bullock, Sneed, Clark, Reisinger, McCray. Thank you. Please add Councilman Stokes as a co-sponsor, uh, Councilman Dorsey as a co-sponsor. Uh, thank you to all my colleagues for co-sponsoring. We know that in this very chamber for the last two and almost two and a half years when I sat as the chair of the Public Safety Committee, myself, this entire council and that committee, 
argued, yelled, screamed, kicked, did everything that we could do to get their previous administration to present a crime plan, a comprehensive crime plan to the city council and most importantly to the citizens of Baltimore. That never happened. And what this legislation will do is to make sure that we never go two years again without having a crime plan. Because in my humble opinion, what we see on the streets of Baltimore in rising homicides and shootings is a direct result of that failed leadership. Because when there is no plan, people don't know what they should be doing. And we understand and we know and we're appreciative of Commissioner Harrison and having a plan from the BPD standpoint. But we in this chamber know that uh, the violence that we see in Baltimore is a public health issue and it cannot solely be solved by the police department and must require uh, coordinating agencies through the city of Baltimore. So I thank you and I look forward to this discussion. This has been assigned to the Public Safety Committee. Resolutions introduced. City Council Resolution 19-0165R, Be More Clean Coordinated Agency Community Cleanup and Maintenance Strategy. For the purpose of requesting that the Director of the Department of Public Works, the Director of the Department of Transportation, the Commissioner of the Department of Housing and Community Development, the Commissioner of the, Depa of the Health Department, and the Director of the Mayor's Office of Performance and Innovation present to the City Council a plan for coordinated community cleanup and maintenance throughout Baltimore and a plan for increasing community involvement. Sponsors Burnett, President Scott, Henry, Cohen, Schleifer, Sneed, Costello, Pinkett, Dorsey, Clark, Reisinger, McRae, Bullock. Please add Councilman Stokes as a co-sponsor. Uh, Chair recognizes Councilman Burnett. Thank you, Mr. President and colleagues. Uh, as we all know, this is a huge issue impacting every district across the city of Baltimore, every neighborhood across the city of Baltimore is the issue of trash, of blight. Uh, it is a public health issue that requires a multi-agency response, much like we've uh, said time and time again in this body that the issue of violence requires an all-hands-on-deck all approach, as does keeping our city clean uh, and safe for, for all of our residents. Uh, we've been in the news a lot over the last few months about this very issue, and uh, it requires all of the agencies to, to work in tandem to address to make our city a cleaner uh, a Baltimore. And so I look forward to a great hearing, and thank you to all of the co-sponsors. Uh, this bill. Thank you, Mr. Councilman. This has been assigned to the Health Committee. City Council Resolution 19-0166R, Informational Hearing, Small Haulers Program and Bulk Trash Program for the purpose of inviting representatives from the Department of the Public Works and the Department of Housing and Community Development to appear before the City Council to discuss the Small Hauler Program and Bulk Trash Program and how these programs can be adjusted to reduce illegal dumping. Sponsors, Henry, President Scott, Cohen, Schleifer, Sneed, Bullock, Costello, Pinkett, Dorsey, Burnett, Clark, Reisinger, McRae. Please add Councilman Stokes as a co-sponsor. Chair recognizes Councilman Henry. Thank you, Mr. President. Continuing on my colleague's theme of uh, cleaner Baltimore, we want to have a conversation specifically drilling down into the issue of uh, illegal dumping and making it easier to dump legally. Uh, there are a couple things that we would like to talk to DPW about. One of the basic ones is we have this small haulers program. It was originally designed to make it easier for small haulers to be treated as something separate from the larger commercial haulers. But what we are finding is that it still doesn't really fit the need. You've got a lot of guys in the city who they've got a truck and they're trying to make some money hauling away stuff from people's houses or from businesses. But if you're only getting 20 or 30 bucks to haul something away, and the way that you do that legally is to pay the city 10 or 20 bucks and only have two possible places to drop it off in the entire city, I think that's a recipe for illegal dumping. And so we want to talk to DPW about the fact that we, as the city of Baltimore, we are definitely paying far more than 10 or $20 to go out and pick up that sofa or old washing machine or whatever it was that was dumped in an alley or a vacant lot because it just wasn't cost effective for somebody to dispose of it the way it should have been. Uh, another conversation we'd like to have with DPW is we've all had complaints from constituents who are trying to dispose of their own trash from their own home, but because they don't own a vehicle that's appropriate to take it to the dump, 
they find themselves trying to use a U-Haul or a ride share, and when they get to the transfer station, DPW tells them, well, that's a commercial vehicle you're driving, so you need a small hauler's permit. It should be simpler than that. It should be easy to legally dispose of your own trash here in the city. We should be making that easier, and I want to thank all my co-sponsors for co-sponsoring this resolution. I look forward to working with the chairs of both committees to have this conversation in conjunction with the one for Councilman Burnett's uh, legislation, and hopefully what will come out of this is a more sensible way for the city to look at keeping itself cleaner. Thank you. Thank you. This has been assigned to the Housing and Urban Affairs Committee. City Council Resolution 19-0167-R, creating another early voting polling place in West Baltimore for the purpose of endorsing the creation of another early voting polling place in West Baltimore. Sponsors, Pinkett, Henry, Cohen, Schleifer, Sneed, Costello, Dorsey, Burnett, Clark, Reisinger, Bullock. Please add Council President Scott as a co-sponsor. Chair recognizes Councilman Pinkett. Thank you, Mr. President. Early voting has become a critical means to ensure that people have the opportunity to vote. Baltimore presently has seven early polling places, only one of which is in what could be considered Central West Baltimore. That location, which is at University of Maryland Baltimore, is historically the lowest performing polling place of the seven, primarily because the location is not centrally located for the majority of West Baltimore constituents. In an effort to promote voter participation and increase accessibility, I, with the support of the representatives of the 40th Legislative District, introduced this resolution calling for the creation of an additional site in West Baltimore that affords the accessibility that we would all agree is essential to increase voter participation. Sites like Coppin State University, Frederick Douglass High School, or even Mondawmin Mall, to name a few, all provide a centralized location with access to public transit. I thank you for your support and look forward to the hearing on this resolution. Thank you. This has been assigned to the Judici Judiciary Committee. City Council Resolution 19-0168-R, Growing the Film Industry in Baltimore, for the purpose of inviting representatives from the Baltimore Office of, Pro of Promotion and Arts to speak at an informational hearing regarding the current status and future potential of the film industry in Baltimore and asking the 2020 Baltimore City delegation to the Maryland General Assembly to support an increase in film production activity tax credit amounts in order to maintain and grow the film industry in Baltimore City. Sponsors, Pinkett, President Scott, Henry, Cohen, Dorsey, Bullock, Sneed, Reisinger. Chair recognizes Councilman Pinkett. Thank you, Mr. President. The Maryland Film Production Activity Tax Credit is an incentive program which was established to attract film and television productions to Maryland, create jobs for Marylanders, stimulate business activity in the state, and provide strong economic impacts. This incentive program is administered as a refundable tax credit, meaning no upfront funding is needed under this tax credit program. The rebate is given only after production is finished, money is spent, qualified spending is approved through an audit and, tax return, and a tax return is filed. This is the most transparent tax credit in the state. According to the Maryland Department of Commerce from 2011 to 2018, film and television productions um, hired over 20,000 Marylanders, these are electricians, carpenters, caterers, et cetera, did business with over 18,000 Maryland businesses, created a projected total economic impact of $1 billion. These are jobs and dollars that, but for that tax credit, would not have come to Maryland. But in order to sufficiently grow and maintain the industry, it is necessary to increase the annual avail available tax credit amount. Presently, from fiscal year 20 through 23, the credit will increase from $11 million to $20 million, a figure that pales in comparison to states like Pennsylvania, $70 million, New Jersey, $75 million, Ohio, 40, North Carolina, 34, and then even Georgia or Illinois, where there's no cap at all. During a time when the landscape of the film industry is shifting, this is a prime time for the state of Maryland to increase these credits to take advantage of the potential economic impact that can be realized in this industry. Thank you for your support. Thank you. This has been assigned to the Taxation, Finance, and Economic Development Committee. Consent calendar. You can find the consent calendar in Section A at the back of the agenda. Without objection, the consent calendar will be approved. The consent calendar is approved. Chair recognizes Councilman Costello. Thank you, Mr. President. I move uh, short titles on uh, second and third reader for the duration of the hearing. Without objection, there will be short titles for the remainder of the meeting. 
Short titles are approved. Committee reports. We will now move to bills on second reader. Executive appointments. EA 19-0244, Thomas K.M. Cujo, M.D. MPH. Chair recognizes Councilman Stokes. Mr. President, the committee held hearings on September the 18th, 2019. I move the nomination favorable. All those in favor of approving this nomination say aye. aye. All opposed say nay. The motion is approved. This nomination is approved. EA 19-0246, Jillian Aldebron. Chair recognizes Councilman Stokes. I move the nomination favorable. All those in favor of approving this nomination say aye. aye. All those in favor of approving this nomination say aye. aye. Those opposed say nay. The motion is approved. This nomination is approved. EA, EA 19-0247, Tierra M. Hawks. Chair recognizes Councilman Stokes. I move the nomination favorable. All those in favor of approving this nomination say aye. aye. All opposed say nay. The motion is approved. This nomination is approved. EA 19-0248, Natalie Novak. Chair recognizes Councilman Stokes. I move the nomination favorable. All those in favor of approving this nomination say aye. aye. All opposed say nay. The motion is approved. This nomination is approved. Judiciary and legislative investigations. City Council Bill 19-0377, Whistleblower Rights and Responsibilities. Chair recognizes Councilman Costello. Thank you, Mr. President. Committee held a hearing, uh, the, and there are amendments on my colleagues' desks. I move the uh, bill favorably as amended. You move the amendments, Mr. Councilman. Oh, I'm sorry. I move the amendments. All those in favor of approving the amendments say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. The amendments are adopted. Chair recognizes Councilman Costello. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the bill favorably as amended. All those in favor of approving this bill as amended say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. The motion is approved. This bill moves to third reader. Judiciary Committee. City Council Bill 19-0337, Youth Athletic Protection. Chair recognizes Councilman Costello. Thank you, Mr. President. Committee held a hearing. There are amendments on our colleagues' desks. In addition, there are also second reader amendments from Council President Scott on our colleagues' desks. At this time, I move the amendments. All those in favor of approving the amendments say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. The amendments are adopted. Chair recognizes Councilman Costello. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the bill favorably as amended. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. The motion is approved. This bill moves to third reader. City Council Bill 19-0412, City Property, renaming Engine 52 Fire Station to Hilton L. Roberts Senior Fire Station. Chair recognizes Councilman Costello. Thank you, Mr. President. Committee held a hearing. I move the bill favorably. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. aye. All opposed say nay. The motion is approved. This bill moves to third reader. Land Use Committee. City Council Bill 18-0294, rezoning certain properties to be rezoned to the new IMU-2 zoning district. Chair recognizes Councilman Reisinger. Mr. President, this bill has amendments to all my colleagues' desk. I move the amendments. All those in favor of improving the amendments say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. The amendments are adopted. Chair recognizes Councilman Reisinger. I move the bill favorable as amended. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. The motion is approved. This bill moves to third reader. City Council Bill 19-0338, zoning, conditional use conversion of a single family dwelling unit to two dwelling units in the R8 zoning district, variance 1110 Edmondson Avenue. Chair recognizes Councilman Reisinger. Moved, uh, finding of facts. Without objection, the findings of facts will be adopted the findings of facts are adopted. Chair recognizes Councilman Reisinger. I move the bill favorable. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. The motion is approved. This bill moves to third reader. City Council Bill 19-0369, rezoning 2908 Belmont Avenue. Move. Ch Chair recognizes Councilman Reisinger. Move the finding of facts. Without objection, the findings of fact will be adopted. The findings of facts are adopted. Chair recognizes Councilman Reisinger. Move the bill favorable. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. The motion is approved. This bill moves to third reader. City Council Bill 19-0370, zoning, conditional use conversion of a single family dwelling unit to two dwelling units in the R8 zoning district, variances 1326 West Pratt Street. Chair recognizes Councilman Reisinger. 
I move the finding of facts. Without objection, the findings of fact will be adopted. The findings of fact are adopted. Chair recognizes Councilman Reisinger. This bill has amendments. I move the amendments. All those in favor of approve the amendments say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. The amendments are adopted. Chair recognizes Councilman Reisinger. I move the bill favorable is amended. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. aye. All opposed say nay. The motion is approved. This bill moves to third read of Public Safety Committee. City Council Bill 19-0409, Transparency and Oversight in Claims and Litigation. Chair recognizes Councilman Scheifler. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, per the President's Office request, we'll hold this bill until the next meeting. Without objection, this bill will be held until the October 7th meeting. Thank you. Transportation Committee. City Council Bill 19-0444, Complete Streets, Extended Deadlines, Modified Effective Date. Chair recognizes Councilman Dorsey. Thank you, Mr. Council President. The Transportation Committee held a hearing on this bill on Wednesday, September 11th. Uh, I move the bill favorable. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. aye. The motion is approved. This bill moves to third reader. Chair recognizes Councilman Dorsey. Thank you, Mr. Council President. Uh, as this bill pertains to the extension of certain deadlines, one of which is looming at October 3rd, and uh, we'd like to get this onto the mayor's desk. Uh, in order to extend these deadlines before that one. Uh, I'd like to waive the rules in order to have this bill move to th be voted on third reader on the same day. Roll call. President Scott. Yes. Councilman Cohen. Yes. Councilwoman McCray. Yes. Councilman Dorsey. Yes. Councilman Henry. Yes. Councilman Schleifer. Yes. Councilman Pinkett. Yes. Councilman Burnett. Yes. Councilman Bullock. Yes. Councilman Reisinger. Yes. Councilman Costello. Yes. Councilman Stokes. Councilwoman Sneed. Yes. Councilwoman Clark. Yes. The ayes have it, and this bill moves to third reader today. Third reader requiring the invocation of City Council Rule 12-1 for a same-day advance from second to third reader. City Council Bill 19-0444, Complete Streets, Extended Deadlines, Modified Effective Date. President Scott, Cohen, McCray, Dorsey, Henry, Schleifer, Pinkett, Burnett, Bullock, Reisinger, Costello, Stokes, Sneed, Clark. This bill is approved. Third reader for final passage. City Council Bill 18-0304, property, ta property tax credits, 911 public safety telecommunicators. President Scott, Cohen, McCray, Dorsey, Henry, Schleifer, Pinkett, Burnett, Bullock, Reisinger, Costello, Stokes, Sneed, Clark. This bill is approved. City Council Bill 19-0371, zoning, conditional use banquet hall, 4339 York Road, a portion of the property known as 4335 to 4339 York Road. President Scott, Cohen, McCray, Dorsey, Henry, Schleifer, Pinkett, Burnett, Bullock, Reisinger, Costello, Stokes, Sneed, Clark. This bill is approved. City Council Bill 19-0402, zoning, conditional use parking lots, Hohen Lithograph Building. President Scott, Cohen, McCray, Dorsey, Henry, Schleifer, Pinkett, Burnett, Bullock, Reisinger, Costello, Stokes, Sneed, Clark. This bill is approved. City Council Bill 19-0408, amending ordinance 15-0428, franchise Crown Castle NG Atlantic Fiber LLC. President Scott, Cohen, McCray, Dorsey, Henry, Schleifer, Pinkett, Burnett, Bullock, Reisinger, Costello, Stokes, Sneed, Clark. This bill is approved. City Council Bill 19-0420, Zoning, Signing Variances, 1411 Warner Street and 301 Stockholm Street. President Scott, Cohen, McCray, Dorsey, Henry, Schleifer, Pinkett, Burnett, Bullock, Reisinger, Costello, Stokes, Sneed, Clark. This bill is approved. Committee announcements. Committee announcements. This side, Councilwoman McCray. The Taxation, Finance, and Economic Development Committee um, would like to re-announce two hearings um, that will be televised, 18-0307 um, for Thursday, September 26, 2019 at 10 a.m. Um, this is going to be the Water Accountability and Equity Act. The second hearing is going to be... 19 0320, Thursday, October the 3rd, 2019, at 10 a.m. Um, within Council Chambers. That's going to be passenger for higher services tax. Um, a new committee announcement for Taxation, Finance, and Economic Development Committee 19 um, 0150 R, Thursday, October the 10th. 10 a.m. in council chambers. This is going to be investigative hearing entities receiving city funds. Are they holding up their end of the bargain? 
Thank you. Committee announcements on this side. Councilman Scheifer. Thank you, Mr. President. The uh, Public Safety Committee will hold a hearing on uh, Thursday, October 3rd at 5.01 p.m. on the monthly crime stats of the police department, and this hearing will be televised on Charm TV. Thank you. Councilman Dorsey. Thank you, Mr. Council President. Uh, this, uh, this legislative oversight hearing was announced a while ago, but it, just as a reminder, the Transportation Committee will hold a hearing this Wednesday, the 25th at 3 p.m. on the subject of the resurfacing program and ADA compliance in the city. Thank you. Thank you. This side, Councilwoman Sneed. The Labor Committee will hold a hearing on Thursday, October 17, 2019 at 1 p.m. Um, the Baltimore Police Department staffing and recruitment, hiring and retention for the purpose of holding a, a legislative oversight hearing to have the Baltimore Police Department update the committee on police officers recruitment, hiring, retention and what progress has been made to implement the department's uh, civilization plan. Thank you. Councilman Stokes, it's not a Mervo Dunbar week, so you don't have to wait till last. Councilman Stokes. Okay, we, we'll see. Uh, the Executive Appointments Committee will hold a hearing on Wednesday, September the 25th, 2019 at 10 a.m. to review the final nomination for Commission for Historical Architectural Preservation, and that person is Jill Dennis from the 6th District. Thank you. Councilman Bullock. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I rise to announce the rescheduling of two bills that are originally announced for tomorrow, um, the first of which is bill number 190406. Um, that will be held on um, October 22nd at 2 p.m. in council chambers, and that is Franchise Silco Partnership uh, DBA Verizon uh, Wireless. And then also um, at 2.05 on the 22nd, um, will be City Council Bill 190407, uh, which is the franchise, a new singular wireless PCS. Also want to announce two other uh, hearings. So on November 12th at 3.30 p.m. in Council Chambers, we'll be hearing City Council Bill 190432, campaign signs in residential areas, repeal of earliest date requirement followed by um, bill number 190148R uh, at 3.35 p.m. on the 12th, and that is an informational hearing regarding mold in housing sponsored by Councilman Henry. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Burnett. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the Health Committee will hold three legislative oversight hearings. Uh, the dates and times are as follows. On Wednesday, October 30th, 2019, beginning at 5 p.m., a hearing will be held on the topic of gun violence reduction. On Wednesday, November 20th, 2019, beginning at 5 p.m., a hearing will be held on the topic of tobacco cessation. And on Wednesday, December 11th at 5 p.m., a hearing will be held on the topic of lead paint. All hearings will be televised, held here in the council chambers, and are open to the public. Thank you. Councilman Reisinger. Mr. President, the Land Use Committee will hold a hearing on Bill 19-0415 uh, on Wednesday, November the 6th at 1 p.m. in the council chambers. This is a zoning a uh, conditional use conversion of a single family dwelling unit to a two dwelling units in the R8 zoning district with variances located at 1700 West Franklin Street. The committee will hold a hearing on Bill 19-0418 on Wednesday, November 6th at 1.05 p.m. in the council chambers. This is zoning. It's a conditional use conversion of a single family dwelling unit to a two dwelling unit in the R8 zoning district with variance located at 1047 North Caroline Street. And the committee will hold a hearing on Bill 19-0419 on Wednesday, November 6 at 1.10 p.m. This is a zoning conditional use conversion of a single family dwelling unit to three dwelling unit in the R7 zoning district variances located at 2310 Utah Place. Thank you, Mr. President. Councilman Costello. Thank you, Mr. President. Judiciary Committee will hold a voting session on Monday, October 7th at 1 p.m. in Chambers on uh, Bill 19-0401, Comprehensive Bag Reduction at the request of Councilman Henry. Judiciary will hold a hearing on Tuesday, October 29th at 10 a.m. on 
uh, Council Bill 19-0163R, informational hearing, closed means closed, clarifying 311 services approach to resolving requests at the request of Councilman Pinkett. Also that day at 10 a.m., uh, we will have, actually, uh, pardon me, I move to suspend rules 10-2 and 10-3 to announce a hearing. Without objection, the rules will be suspended. Thank you, Mr. President. Judiciary suspended. will hold a hearing on Tuesday, October 29th at 10 a.m., Council Bill 19-0167R, creating another early voting polling uh, place in West Baltimore at the request of Councilman Pinkett. Uh, Budget and Appropriations Committee will hold a hearing on Thursday, October 3rd at 5 p.m. This is a legislative oversight hearing for Baltimore City Police Department. My colleague, uh, Councilman Schleifer, who chairs public safety, will announce the accompanying hearing. Uh, Budget and Appropriations will hold a hearing on Thursday, October 24th at 2 p.m. in Chambers. It's Council Resolution 17-0004R, Budget Oversight Hearings for Baltimore City Public Schools. 2019 uh, fiscal year closeout at the request of Costello and Cybersecurity and Emergency Preparedness Committee will hold a hearing. Uh, this will be legislative oversight, cyber attacks, awareness, prevention, and mitigation. Uh, this will be televised on Charm TV on Wednesday, November 6th at 5 p.m. Uh, at the request of Council President Scott. And uh, Mr. President, as you're aware, just to share with our colleagues, uh, Councilman Schleifer, who will be co-chairing that committee with me, uh, we have set up a number of expert interviews uh, to discuss the scope of the committee uh, and, and get a better understanding of which direction we should be going. Uh, if there's anyone who has expertise in the fields of cybersecurity, cybersecurity or uh, emergency preparedness, uh, we would ask that you reach out to Councilman Schleifer or myself. We've already connected a number of those experts who uh, have reached out to us or to you, Mr. President, uh, so that we can get them in to help have them help guide us on the scope of this committee. So thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Regular announcements, and I'll start by first asking uh, Councilman Reisinger to honor a moment of silence for the now. 249 uh, victims of homicide in the city of Baltimore and all those that we've lost to the opioid crisis as well. We also have some very special guests with us tonight. Uh, members of this year's class of GBC leadership are here tonight, so let's give them a round of applause. Uh, chair recognizes Councilwoman McCray. I'd like to request a moment of silence um, for Mr. William Dick Bonnet. Bonnet passed away on September the 18th. He was known to his family and friends as Dick or Dickie. To his grandchildren and great-grandchildren as Pops. To me, Mr. Bonnet was my kind and dependable neighbor. Mr. Bonnet was also the son of Baltimore City Councilman William Bonnet, who was known as the Dean of the City Council and represented the first district from the 1930s to the 1960s, the late 1960s. He didn't follow his father into politics. Instead, he started from the bottom, working in a mailroom at ESO, ESO, which we now know as Exxon. And then he went on to own multiple businesses and properties throughout our city, including Frankfurt Towing. As his neighbor, I witnessed Mr. Bonnet go to work every single day, every single day, Monday through Sunday. He was a strong advocate for his workers, and he believed in second chances. His belief was that if you were a hard worker, your past should not be an obstacle for obtaining a career. Some of his employees were not able to get a job anywhere else, um, but Mr. Bonnet provided that fair chance for them. He would often say that he was the last of the old timers, and he always provided great practical advice to myself, especially during these last three months, and countless other young politicians in Northeast Baltimore. He supported us. And he was one of our loyal Charm City TV viewers watching every council hearing, every board of estimates meeting, and liquor board meetings. Mr. Bonnet loved his family, he loved his workers, and he loved our great city of Baltimore. He will truly be missed by everyone that he touched. Thank you. 
Thank you. Councilman Henry. Thank you, Mr. President. I also rise to ask for a moment of silence to remember a fallen comrade here in these chambers. This past Friday, September 20th, was the 11th anniversary of the shooting and killing of our former council colleague, Kenneth N. Harris, Sr. And so I would ask that we would have a moment of silence in his memory tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Cohen. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, today, Goucher College released a poll showing that 70% of Marylanders believe we are not spending enough on education and 74% favor increasing taxes to pay more for education. Uh, it is not a coincidence that also today, almost 50 of our schools here in Baltimore uh, were forced to dismiss early because their air conditioning is not functioning. Uh, we live in the richest state in the United States of America. It should be embarrassing to all of us and to those who represent us in Annapolis, including our governor, that we continue to consistently underfund our schools, that we have a massive maintenance backlog. Uh, this is the year when Kerwin goes before the legislature, and so I look forward to working with you on your resolution and holding either a hearing in the Education Committee or the Committee of the Whole uh, to discuss how we as a city need to contribute more to support our kids because our future is dependent on it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Dorsey. Thank you, Mr. Council President. Um, I want to thank my colleague, Daniel McCray, for um, her uh, great eulogy for Dick Bonnet. I have, uh, over the last couple of years, as the Council's representation on the Trespass Towing Committee, had uh, the peculiar pleasure of getting to know Dick Bonnet. Um, I, uh, one of his long, long time employees and somebody who uh, was for all intents and purposes family to him, Paula Protani, was the, uh, is a constituent of mine and um, was the industry rep on the Trespass Towing Board um, for nine years. And uh, I called her the day after Dick's passing and asked her how she was doing. And she said she was at work doing exactly what Dick would have had anybody doing, that there were mouths to feed and that Frankfurt and Mel's towing and Ted's towing and loading dock liquors, all of which were owned by Dick Bonnet, um, were a family and that they were going to get through this together and that they were all working through this. Um, uh, I will miss Dick, um, and uh, thank you again, Councilwoman McCray, for your um, kind words to him. Um, I, over the weekend, had the uh, extreme pleasure of uh, driving a 123-year-old streetcar at the Baltimore Streetcar Museum down on Falls Road. Uh, they celebrated their uh, public reopening after repair to damages done by a CSX train falling on them. Um, it uh, was an extreme pleasure to drive this streetcar. Um, and I just want to encourage, as I, uh, as I commonly encourage people to go out and avail themselves of all of the cultural opportunities that the city has to offer, and um, I, I, I just love to get everybody out to the Streetcar Museum. It's a, really a fascinating place, uh, and there are some really incredible, incredibly devoted volunteers that make what they do possible. Um, so get down to the Streetcar Museum. They're open on the weekends. Here in City Hall, uh, I want to invite folks down to City Hall for the fantastic Derek Adams show in the City Hall galleries, uh, uh, just to you on Charm TV, the, the Dick Bonnets of the world. Uh, we have a gallery here and it has great art in it and I hope you will come down to City Hall and see the Derek Adams show. Uh, for those who uh, have the capacity to wake up and be incredibly intellectually stimulated first thing in the morning, there's a monthly speaker series called Creative Mornings and the, the the September uh, uh, 
talk will be this Friday at 8 a.m. at the Enoch Pratt Library, and it will be given a uh, little household plug here by my partner Aaron Fostel on the subject of Muse. And uh, finally, I'll mention a really interesting and fun thing that's been happening here in Baltimore for the last seven years, uh, maybe more, I don't know, the sweaty eyeballs. Uh, picture that. Sweaty eyeballs uh, is a three-day juried festival of the world's most cutting-edge, quirky, and boundary-pushing animation. It is a uh, festival of short animation films, uh, and this year it will be held at the Parkway Theater October 4th through 6th. So go get yourself some sweaty eyeballs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. May I? Yes, sir. More? Chair recognizes Councilman Dorsey. I just want to make one more note here. Thank you, Councilman Cohen. Uh, that the BSO management and musicians have agreed on a one-year deal with a shortened season and pay raises for the musicians. So I want to um, continue to voice my support for the BSO musicians. Thank you, Mr. Council President, for showing up to their concert uh, in Northwest Baltimore. Um, and uh, I will continue to, as I would hope that the rest of my colleagues would and the rest of the city stand in solidarity with the musicians and supporting this, this institution. Thank you. And before I recognize uh, Councilman Costello and Councilman Scheifler, I just want to say as someone that uh, represented Dick Barnett for a long time and spent a lots of lots and lots of hours not just buying gas, but in his office uh, getting what I call tutelage from him uh, it's a man that will be missed and that our neighborhood will miss miss dearly for someone who not just employed a bunch of people but poured into young men and young women on the daily basis of their knowledge chair recognizes councilman costello thank you mr president i apologize i made a mistake before uh the budget and appropriations committee will hold a hearing on thursday october 10th not the third at 5 p.m in chambers and this is a legislative oversight hearing of the police department at the request of council president scott thank you Chair recognizes Councilman Scheifler. Chair recognizes Councilman Costello. Thank you, Mr. President. 5.01 p.m. Chair recognizes Councilman Scheifler. Thank you, Mr. President. I was going to move uh, short titles for the announcements, but I missed that. <laughs> so I, will, uh, I, I want to uh, reannounce the uh, new date for this uh, monthly oversight hearing uh, for October 10th at 5 p.m. And it'll be televised on Charm TV. Thank you. Thank you. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Clark. Uh, thank you, Mr. President and members. I want to take the occasion to acknowledge that the six-year legislative director of my council office has changed sides and is here tonight on the administration side, Stephanie Murdoch. And so tonight is her first night on the other side of the hall. And I just want to say how proud I am of her. As you all know, I am retiring eventually. I keep saying it, and I really will. Don't worry. <laughs> but because of that, uh, Stephanie went looking for a job and found one across the street. So that's very convenient for me because I don't even have to phone her. I can just yell and say, what had ever happened to that file on $15 minimum wage? So I'm glad. Would you stand up for a minute, Stephanie, so we can all see you in your hey. new, new role? <laughs> so she is now the legislative liaison for the Department of Housing with, general, with the General Assembly, as well as with us here in the City Council. So I look forward to that, and thank you for the privilege of uh, calling her out and saying hello. Thank you. And Stephanie, she called you out just to let you know every council member has sent you 10 emails since the meeting started. Uh, chair recognizes Councilman Reisinger. Mr. President, before we begin, I just want to say that Stephanie, this is eight CDs gained, not lost uh, with Stephanie. Uh, Mr. President, members of the council, the next meeting of the city council will be held on Monday, August the 7th at 5 p.m. And I ask for a moment of silence, Mr. President, for William Dick Bonnet, 
the 249 homicide victims and also Ken Harris Sr. Thank you. There being no further business, this concludes the 67th meeting of the 72nd term of the Baltimore City Council.